today we are going to be creating some levels for our game and we are also going to change the color of our cube and stuff by adding in new materials and just kind of tidying up the game a little bit because it doesn't really look nice so let's get into it straight away and start things off so today's episode if you saw the previous episode it should be a lot shorter because like i explained in the previous episode we have done this already and the first time I did it, nothing record well, recorded, just the sound and record. So you kind of watch me um, doing everything just in silence, which is not really helpful because then, like I don't really explain, you can't really exp you can't hear me explain anything. So let us go and do it again for the fourth time. So first things first, let's go and create a few new materials. So. Our red material here, I am going to rename as a wall material because we are going to use that for our walls. So these materials are just um, going to be used like on a, for a temporary basis now because we don't really want our objects and stuff in our, our game to just be colored. Uh, we might add some textures and stuff to them later on once we've got the like basic gameplay working uh, once we've done that we'll start making the actual game look really nice so the other one we need is a cube uh, material so this one i am going to make like a dark blue and then we can simply just go and drag that well, well, let's do this get out of 2d mode and then double click on our cube so here's our cube so just go drag that onto there so there's our cube and just for now, I'm going to turn our shadows off because I don't really want them. It looks weird. I mean, it doesn't look, it looks normal, but we don't want shadows for now. So our floor is fine. We, let's just go make that a little bit lighter. I don't know, something like that. Make it look more bright. Also, I don't like that, but anyway, we'll leave it like that. Actually, no, let's change it. Okay, we'll save that. Uh, I'm going to rename this. Actually, rather, I'm just going to delete this. We don't need a... a we don't need that and you know what we don't need as also is our plane let's go and delete that okay so we are now going to create a level so to do this we are first going to create a new empty object and this is going to be our level one so i'm just going to name it one because we are going to put this in a prefabs folder which we shall create right now prefabs so in here we are going to drag and drop this level once we finish creating it uh, and then we will probably uh, make it better later on but for now let us go and create a new 3d object and that's going to be another cube so here's our cube we are going to drag our wall material onto this cube so it looks red and then now the only thing that's left to do is we need to go and create a level. So I'm going to move our camera around and I'm also going to change where it, uh, change the position of it so that we can make a proper level. So we'll rotate it this way a little bit. So we'll put that at 90 so it's not like a top down view. And then we can go and put this at zero and put that at zero. Why didn't that work? One cube is at three. Oh, I know why. Camera needs to go up. So our blue needs to go up here. So we'll put this probably over there and then double click on our cube and then focus on there. Okay, so here we are going to work on our level in here while looking at what it looks like in here. So here is our starter, starter cube. So let's see, X that's going backwards so that's fine that's going forward okay cool so we're going to start off with our wall on our minus let's start off at minus four actually let's put yeah we'll start off at minus four we'll put this rather let's okay so we'll set our parent object to zero and then our actual wall will set to minus four okay so there we go so now we need to go and scale this up. So we'll scale it up on the 
uh, what is it, on the z-axis, uh, probably about seven, I mean, seven's a bit much, we'll put it at six. So here's our first wall, now we're going to copy and paste that, and then we are going to shift it to the left by two units. What am I doing? Four, five, six, so minus six. And then we're also going to scale it up by two units, so on the z-axis, so six, seven, eight. And then we are going to drop it down on the z-axis by minus one. So that will create a little bit of a channel that we will now use. So we'll, we shall add another one over here and then we'll put one over here to close that off. And then what we'll do is we'll, well actually let's go, just go and do this now. So we'll copy those, paste them, but I'm going to go and put them on this side. So this one is at minus six. So this one we will put at six. And then I think this one's going to be at three or four, which is fine. So that puts it at, it's kind of like a, a mirror, if you had to put a mirror in the middle over here, it would reflect what you see on each side, so it's kind of like symmetrical. So what we can do now is just copy this one, paste that in. Now I'm going to rotate it on the y-axis 90 degrees, so it's horizontal, paste it at zero, and then we can just scale it to fit into this gap, but we need to change the size or the position of it to be minus 5.5. And then we can scale it up to about 10, 12, 13, there we go. So that's that's fine. That now looks like it's one solid um, U-shaped 3D object. Uh, and then we can do the exact same thing, copy that, and then just shift it just add two onto that, and then we can scale it down to about, I think it's 10, nine, nine, there we go. So that's gonna be nine. So now you can see our, our levels kind of coming together. We have a very simple, but very good looking, if you if I wanna say, uh, I'm joking, that's not good looking at all, but it's a start. We have a very simple looking first level for our game. We just need to close off here and close off there and then we will go and move this guy into our maze. So let's go and do that. We can copy this one and shift it down here and then this way. So we'll put it in the middle so we don't really have to do much shifting. So this will be at 5 and then this will be at 3.5 and then our scale needs to be three. So we can copy that, paste it, and then we can just shift it to minus five. So there we go. Now that we have all of that, we can go and select all of those and name this wall. And then we can go and add a new tag onto it and we will call this wall. So we'll go and add this tag onto all of those objects. And then here we have it, here's our first level, we can drag and drop that into there. So now we can see if we want to reuse it, at, reuse it as many times as we want, we can simply just drag and drop them into our game. And there we have so many different levels. I don't know why I did that, but let's go get rid of them. That was a bit stupid. Okay, so here's our first game. So now let's go see what actually happens when we play our game. So here is our game. You can't really see if it's 3D or not, but you can see that we can now go through our maze um, and we need to fix this. So we need to shift our game a little bit because you can see it doesn't really fit properly. You can see it's off by half a unit, which is not what we want. So let's go and click on our cube here quickly and see where it is. So I'm gonna shift our entire un um, our maze or level one by which way do you want it to 0.5 so that should be fine so we can save that and then let's see if this works so we can now move our cube so we'll, for example this is a very simple but like a test level so we'll start our game over here just make this a bit bigger start our game over here and this is our end point where we finish the game off 
So if we start here and we move down, uh, we should be able to navigate our way through the maze all the way up from start from point A to point B. And then as soon as we get there, we'll add in some kind of trigger point, probably in the next episode, where we display a message for now that says, congratulations, you have completed this level in, in our case, 36 moves, but that's because we had to move from here into our maze. But yeah, you get the point. That's how we create a very simple level. Um, and then what else do we want to do? Let's go, let's just go and move our, our cube. So we want our cube to start somewhere over here. So let's go and put that there and then we can just round this off to minus five and so it's going to be three. Okay. So that should be fine. So now let's go and add some colliders onto this because we don't want our game to allow us to actually move the cube in and out of this maze like this. We want it to be restricted to only move inside between our walls. So let's go do that quick. So let's see, on our cube, we have a box collider ready. There it is, it's surrounding our entire cube, which is correct. But on our walls, we also have a box collider, which surrounds all of them, so that's fine. So on our cube, now what we want to do is we want to go and add in a rigid body. So let's go and add that onto it. But when we play the game, you'll see that our cube actually disappears. And that's because it's got gravity on it and we no longer have a floor. So let's go get rid of that. On our cube, we can go to our rigid body here and let's go and get rid of use gravity. And then we also want to uh, freeze our rotation on all of the axes because we don't, for now, we don't want our cube to rotate on any axis. Um, and also for now, we don't want our, bo our box or cube to move anywhere other than the X and the Z axis. So we don't even want it to move up and down like this on the Z axis. So we'll go and freeze that, freeze those four so that we can get our cube moving from left to right, up and down the way we want it. So now you can see our cube moves from left to right and up and down through our cube or through our maze rather, the way we want it to. But there is one problem. The collision does not work the way we want it to. So, I mean, it does work. It doesn't allow you to go through the maze, but if you press it quickly, you, kind of, you can kind of jump out of the maze, if that makes sense. So if I press it once to go to the right, you can see that, okay, I think that was twice. If I press it once, or oh, clearly not that way, but if I press it, okay, so if I press it, it looks like it's only working going to the left, which is weird, and going up and down. But you can see it's clearly not working. What we want to make the game is to, to do is to make the game um, only allow our cube to move inside here. And as soon as we press up at this position, nothing happens. Maybe we might just make the cube shake a little bit um, and kind of tell you that you can't go through that object, some kind of indication. But we'll get to that later down the line in another video. Uh, what else do you want to do today? We think that's pretty much it for today. So let's see. We add. We have uh, on our cube. We don't have a cube cube tag. So let's go and add another cube on here, just because we might use this later on in the game. Cube. Save that. We actually might change the name of the cube as well. So we'll put that on there and then save that. So, also, because, I think it's because, um, where is it, on our scripts here, we created this global script and we didn't really attach it anywhere into our scene, but because it's in the, our fo game folder, uh, we can still pick it up and still use it. So that's good to know because I've always been adding it into our scene. And the reason I know it works is because we are currently using it to update our move count. So that's nice to know. So that is pretty much it for uh, today's episode. So thank you again for watching if you made this far. And uh, tomorrow's episode or whenever that one is, we will be rotating the camera around a center point. It is fairly simple. Um, and then we might create another level or actually we are going to add in a trigger point at the end of the first level so that we can 
display some some kind of message to the user or the player when they have when they have reached the final or the end point of the game. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that so you don't miss out on that. Turn your no notifications on. And if you like this video, go ahead and like it. And I will see you in tomorrow's episode. So enjoy the rest of your day and see you tomorrow. Goodbye.